Hi, me. Okay, so um, I heard a quote today, which uh, I was actually kind of impressed with. Uh, it might pertain to some of you, so I figured I'd share it with you guys. How many of you know, I think her name is Meg Kelly, the Fox blonde news reporter girl. Is it Meg Kelly? Meg something? Megan Kelly. Okay, Megan Kelly. Not an overall fan of hers, but how many of you know Dr. Phil? Not a fan of his either. But, I guess years ago he told her something which actually made a lot of sense. Um, she, this is way before she got famous on Fox News. She was talking about how she was depressed that she was basically here in life and other people were doing so many better things. She's like, why are all my friends doing better things than me and more than me? And he actually had a great response for that, which I never thought of. He says, well, you're settling for where you're at. Think about it. You know, we have a secretary who's no longer here, but she's just settling for where she's at. You know, she got disability. That's what she's planning to do for the rest of her entire life is just staying on disability. Getting the bare minimum of housing, the bare minimum of just so she's settling. So his point was, if you want to get somewhere, if you if you see someone that you idolize, do what they do. I mean, go out and change your life. Just do something. So I thought it was kind of a kind of a good quote there. Because uh, a lot of people do that. They uh, and uh, you know my niece, uh, prime example. Uh, I went to visit my brother. Some of you know part of the story, but when when I brought Amber back with me, uh, my niece was 12, a different, diff, diff, different niece. She was 12 years old, and she was throwing a fit in the house. And her mom said, Nikki, if you don't stop it, I'm not going to buy you any more cigarettes. And my immediate thought was, she's 12. <laughs> Why are you buying her cigarettes to begin with? But then Nikki's like, you have no idea the stress I'm under at 12. What's your stress? I mean, Pokemon or this. But uh, she's really broke. She's, she's one of those that's broke for life. You know those people. And she's posting online the other day. She's like, you know, I think I'm going to get a tattoo today. Does anyone want to go with me? I mean, what's a tattoo cost? 100 bucks probably for a small one. So I post on there. I'm like, I can't, how, how are you affording this? I can't afford tattoos. She goes, well, when you start complaining about my money, then you can tell me which bill you're going to pay. <coughs> then the very next day, man, then we got any money? I don't have any money for whatever bill it was. It's like, seriously, you just got a tattoo on a Friday, then a Saturday you're complaining you have no money. But she's one of those that's kind of stagnant. She was going to school. She, was, she applied to school, she got accepted to school, she started school, and then we never heard another word about it. So you know what that means. She dropped out of school. But she was planning, it's like, you know, I mean, I'm thrilled with all you guys. Y'all are here for a reason. You're going to school, which is awesome. But I just thought that was a really cool quote. You know, don't, people settle. Don't settle. I mean, if you see someone doing something, get what they got. You know, work your butt off. Uh, Dave Ramsey, y'all know Dave Ramsey? Yes. Not the chef. Talking the finance guy. Dave Ramsey was talking about, if you're broke, go get a job. I'm, even if it's $2 an hour delivering pizza, that's $2 an hour for the hours when you're not doing a darn thing. So that's a good point. So, All right. I just thought I'd tell you that because I thought it was kind of interesting. All right. Well, sorry, man. You, you get both in here. So this is not an actual class. So I can talk about anything. Yay. But, uh, all right, um, this week we're in forensics. Actually, for the next two weeks, we're doing a project called John the Ripper. Okay? It's not porn, <laughs> but it is, <laughs> it's not murder. It is what some would consider an exploitation tool. So if you were to install, uh, I, don't, I hope for Rose State's fixed it. We'll find out here in a second. Yeah, they actually would. Uh, it's funny, when I demoed this in room 200 a couple of semesters ago, I'd run it and delete it because the antivirus was detecting it as a uh, malicious tool, basically. Because it is. It's an exploitation. It's also known as a privilege escalation because it breaks passwords. So we're uh, doing a project in that in forensics. Uh, when I took this class, when I took forensics in the University of Tulsa, I had the same project. 
I ran the tool without any modification whatsoever, broke it in like three seconds. Passwords were baseball, softball, tennis, and golf. So how much did I learn in those three seconds? Right, but I didn't know how it worked. I just literally ran John the Ripper without any switches, any anything, and it broke the passwords. So I didn't learn a darn thing. So in my class, I give you two weeks for this project. And if you know anything about forensics, if I give two weeks for a project, it normally, normally takes you two weeks for a project. Now, did anyone notice that I actually left the results of this one up there too? <laughs> I did. did you find them this time? No. no, they were up there. I didn't check. I should have. They were up there, and I think I went through every other week and checked them. Like seriously, I left them again. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna go check them all. When I'm, I'm pretty sure I went and checked them all. Yeah. I was like, that sucks. But, all right. But, uh, Okay, Hashcat is actually faster, except there's a few rules that John uses that Hashcat won't run. Because we're actually, last semester, we're planning on doing this exact project with Hashcat, but we couldn't do a couple of the rules. And, yeah, and Hashcat's popular, but John the Ripper is more popular. So that's why. I mean, if you can do John the Ripper, you can do Hashcat, put it that way. But for the project, I need to be able to do all these specific things, so you need John the Ripper for that. And there's lots of tools to do this stuff. But this is actually used, the stake break we all used in forensics uses John the Ripper rules. So they're very, very nice. popular. So, All right, I'm going to give you a brief of what John the Ripper, this is the same presentation I give in the forensics class. And then we're going to walk through some of using it, okay? All right. Uh, a guy by the name of Caleb Glaive used to work for me, by the way. He... Uh, he made this presentation for me. It's pretty decent. He, uh, <coughs> there is a website. If I can find my browser here. It's not rose.edu. Openwall.org. <coughs> this is John the w Ripper's website. Anything you want's up here. This is all about John the Ripper password recovery, and it's just crazy. So and you can literally go on Google type a John uh, what's what's the rule we want a substitution and it'll let's spell that John I need to put John the Ripper I'll just put JTR that should do it okay there it goes and it goes right into the different syntax rules so I mean they're all there the whole tricky part about this project is figure out which one does what I mean which ones to use okay Way back when I first started teaching this, we all did, we just mainly did substitution. But now we do a little bit of everything. Okay? I do have an extra credit for this project, which I have not sent out yet. I mean, you got two weeks to do it anyway. I'll send it out. It's not who solves it first. Anyone know why I'm not giving that one out this time? Because you, because the first person to solve the last lab actually. Got to do this one. Yeah, two people have already solved it all. Is yeah. that the people in this room? Who, who, I don't remember their names. Two people already solved the entire lab. I'm like, seriously? Because the entire class is up there already. So you can start early. So that's that's why I'm not doing the whole who gets it first because they've already done it. But you, it's should, you should make an enhanced word list for the, so that those who didn't finish the last lab can't. <coughs> oh, well, that's actually a good point. I probably need to... Uh, yeah, I need to think about that because the the prior lab would help on this. Yeah, that does build on it. I need to, I need to think on that. So. And, then send, and if you do think if you do agree, send us an enhanced work list next week. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. All right, so I'm gonna be running John the Ripper. John the Ripper is again a command line tool. If I was to just click John, that's what I get. I was very impressed so far in forensics. No one has told me I've been clicking this for an entire week and got nothing. Remember I told you I always did that steganography and they yeah. didn't. Maybe it's because I stressed it so many times. The words got out. Okay. So, here's the way it basically works. The command is John. So if I was down here at the command line, just type John. Uh, now if you're interested in it, I could send out the extra credit to this entire club. And that way, since y'all are going to get a general idea of how it works, 
then if you do break it, I will give you extra credit in what one of the classes you enrolled in, at least if it's one of mine. Is there anybody in my class but not forensics? Okay, a couple of you. So there you go. That might work for you. Okay. So if you just type John by itself, it tells you the usage, like most tools do. Okay? It told me the different options and all kinds of stuff. Okay? Then uh, a lot of times it'll give you the Unix rules. So when you see dot slash, that's you can do that in Windows. If I do dot, dot slash John, oh, I can't do that in here. Well, crap. Okay, you, got, you can only do it on Windows. But dot means the parent directory or the, the, the current directory. So that's really a Unix command. But I'm going to show you exactly how this works. Yes? I would have tried um, the other slash. Is that what it is? <coughs> okay, yeah, okay, it does work. Okay. I can never remember which darn slash it is. And because you can actually do dot dot, that will go back a directory, but that's not important for here. Word list specifies the word list mode, and we're going to look at that, how to do that here in a second. And then there's a password file you can use, which we're going to be looking at one. Then the rules allow us to mangle the rules, which we're going to see how that works. And then demo passes the name of the file. Okay, so that, I'm going to show you how this works. So I'm going to go over here. Now in this directory, I have a file called Word and pass wd. I think we're just going to work with word.txt. I'm going to uh, yeah, okay. That's the one with the passwords in it. Okay. So, I'm going to type just like that command there at the bottom. Now, here we should have John. Yeah, we no longer have dash 386. John the Ripper in the past had 386, but now you just type John. John dash dash word list, which means use a word list. In this case, we're going to use word.txt. Okay. What the word list is, that's your passwords to start with. Okay. Let me open that file up so you can see what I'm talking about. If I open this up with text pads not on here, seriously? <sighs> Killing me. Just do notepad then. It's just words. All it is. Nothing more than words. There's quite a few of them. Okay? Ends in zooming, I think. Yeah, ends in zooming. You'll see how that comes into play here in a minute. Okay, so let's go back here, go back here. So dash dash word list tells it to use a word list. You can download word lists off the internet. You can download them off openwall.org. There's a word list up here. Products. See, there's John the Ripper. There's for Linux and Mac, and this works on all of them. Let's go look for JTR Word List. How about download? Okay, largest password list, so you can download Word List right here somewhere, right there. One, wow, 1,700,000 passwords for free. So if you're going to use this in real life, I would probably download a a word list from some, which is basically a list of passwords. What John the Ripper is going to do is it's going to take the password, it's going to hash it. What hashing, I think, did I talk about hashing in this class yet? Yeah. Yeah, do I need to cover it? Let me, let me explain what hashing is. There's something called a one-way hash. Okay. Think of it like your windshield on your car. So we all know what the windshield on a car is. Okay. If I was to smash my windshield on my car, it ends up with a million little pieces. Is there any way to go backwards with that? No. Once you smash it, you can't go back. That's the way a hash works for a password. When I logged into my computer here a second ago, did it actually send my password across the network to the domain controller? No. What it did is the login component on this computer took what I entered. It hashed it with MD5. I'm pretty sure Windows is using MD5. And then it sent the hash across the network. And then what it did is it compared it with the password hash that's stored in the domain controller. Easy enough. That way, if you were to capture my the hash going across the network, it wouldn't do you much good unless you could break it. Okay. But you could download a password list. So John the Ripper takes these password lists, hashes them, and then mingles them whichever way we tell it, and then you can compare it with password files. Okay. Easy enough. Okay. So let's continue on. So I got dash dash word list. Then I got to do dash dash rules, and that's where we're going to sh we're going to use rules, which I'm going to show you how that works in just a second. And std out means standard output. I'm going to show the results to the screen. Okay. 
before I do that, we need to edit something. We need to find john.conf right here. This is the file we need to edit. And since we don't have text pad, I don't. I don't know if, yeah, it, it's a little bit better than Notepad. Well, okay, this will work. Okay. Sometimes Notepad doesn't do the returns correctly. Textpad, you can compile Java and do all kinds of stuff. Well, what this file is, is the rules. Okay. If you were to run steg break and look in the file of where you got the steg tools from, you'll see a John Conf file in there. Because it's actually using John the Ripper to manipulate the passwords as well. Okay. All right. There's single crack mode. We need to go on down to word list mode, which is way down. There it is. Okay. I add this section in here so the students can find it very easily. I'm going to delete some of these rules. Okay. Okay. So you can see them. All right. Now, so when I specified dash dash rules, it's coming into here. See, list.rules. That's what we're going to use. Okay. Now, John the Ripper has a lot of different rules. Let's talk about some of them. Okay? Don't worry about those. The first one is substitution. Okay, I'm going to show you what this does. So I'm going to tell John the Ripper, actually I'm going to tell this file, I'm going to substitute an A with an at. Actually, I'm going to do substitute an O with a 8. That'll be better. Okay? So what I did was I said, replace all characters that match X with character Y. So when I just said, substitute O, that's a capital O, with 8, it should go through my password, my word list. Every place that sees an O should replace it with an 8. Okay? Let's make sure that's really happening. I'm going to open another window here so we can see it. Okay, so I'm going to do type word.txt. So you can actually see that word file. Do you all agree the last word is zooming? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I'm going to go back over here to this one. Yeah, actually, let me close this guy out. I don't need him right now. I'm just trying to do it all on one screen. Okay, so I told it to substitute, so now I'm going to save it. So the tool is now going to read this and substitute O's with 8's. So if I go back to this one and hit enter, I ran it and see what happened? Remember zooming on the other screen over there? Zooming became with eights in it. Okay. So why is that even important? Okay. Anyone ever heard of something called leet speak? Yep. Okay. That's where maybe I'm gonna use the word password as my password. That would be stupid. Do you all agree? But maybe if I replace the A with an at sign, that would be still stupid. But it would be a little bit better. Do you agree with that? A is four. And maybe replace the S with a dollar sign. Or maybe replace the O with a zero. So I'm replacing letters in it. And lead speak is basically speaking using those letters. Okay. Okay. So what I can do is I can go into John the Ripper. So obviously that was a bad choice, but I could have replaced it with zero. Then I could replace the Z with uh, an S. Okay? So now let's run it again. So now if I run the tool one more time, now you'll see zooming becomes zooming with zeros. Okay? So what would happen was John the Ripper would now made these new words, and then it could hash it and compare it against a password file. Okay? Now, I actually have a password file here. Let me show you what that looks like. I have one right here. And I'm going to open. I wish they installed Notepad on here. This is what a hash of a password looks like. This is a Unix formatted file. I'm going to format my fonts, make them a little bit bigger. OK. So this is exactly the way you would see it in a Unix-based system, okay? This is using MD5 with, I think this one's with no salt, okay? So what John the Ripper will do is it will take this, it took my rules, manipulated my password file, and then I'll put it here. If I was to do this, 
but it will do now was it instead of showing on the screen it has actually manipulated those words and it's now trying to break them and it didn't break any of them so that means none of those hashes you see, see the problem is I don't know what the hashes are um, let's I think let's try let's try a basic one I think uh, I think a and at was one of them let's try that one On break one at least. Oh, well, naturally it's not going to. And if you want to make sure it's still doing it, I can instead of sending to the password file, I could send it to STD out, and you'll see now it didn't show anything there. But up in here somewhere there would be an A that changed to an at. Now this is case sensitive too. Boy, well, do you remember in the we had it? Was it baseball or something we had in here for a word? Uh, um, oh, well, baseball has always been one. Does that have the simple passwords? I don't remember if it did. What did we change? But what was baseball? It was an A with an at and an E with a three. Let me do this one, then we'll add the next one. I don't remember what they were. I just want to show them what happens when it breaks one. Dollar sign with an S. Actually, it would. But is baseball in the file? That's the question. So I don't know if it is. Well, I don't know. Baseball would break <coughs> A substitution and S substitution. Okay, let me go in and edit that file so I can show them what it looks like. I don't think we did E substitution if it's in the constellation. Okay, let's do... Let's make sure baseball's in here. Yes, bass. Shh. Right. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> let's try typing one hand. It didn't drop, work. Drop, drop the base bat. All right, let's try baseball now. Can't remember what we changed. Probably not. Okay, then what? What else could we? Have? It was at B A. Did we do S? No, it wasn't the one. It was simple. Whatever we did, darn it. Put them on separate lines in case I only did one of them. Now, when they all ran on one line, it did all three rules at the same time. On separate lines, it's going to do them separately, obviously. Ah, uh -huh, found one. I got one. Hard as nails. Ah, oh, that's a good one. Too. See, what it did was it ran <laughs> A with an F through everything, the whole dictionary. Then the E with the three through the whole dictionary. <laughs> And then the S with the dollar sign through the whole dictionary. That's why it took longer. And hard as nails, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see. Edit. Properties. Well, what do you zoom with the projector then? Oh, is that the zoom remote? <laughs> now there's a little thing you can zoom over there. Okay, there it is. All right. Stop. I need to be able to see the rest of the screen here in a minute. You can't see the rest of the screen. Zoom out so they can see some. But you'll see how hard as nails was broken. I ran it, and this time it said the password is hard as nails. And that's password 17. Now what it also does at the same time is it makes, where's my pot file? Let me show darn extensions. This drives me crazy without extensions. Whoever's in charge of this machine sucks at getting this ready. Right. It's not me. <laughs> All right, John. That pot right there. Open with. <sighs> okay, we need to put no a text pad on here or something. Can I just do that. Naturally, I can't. I'm just gonna rename this to John. That text. Naturally, it looks like crap. Hold on. See, now, now you know I want text pad. Put text pad on your... Uh, there it is. Okay. Down here at the end, it actually added an entry, hard as nails, and that password, this is the hash for it. This is what's called the golden dictionary. It will never break that one again. Watch. So, you remember, you see a second ago, it broke it. You all agree with that? If I run the exact same command, it's not going to do it. 
watch it do it. Oh, I deleted the file. I renamed it. Yeah, you renamed it. it. Okay, it's going to run it one more time. It's going to break it then the next time it won't. I renamed it, so it's going to do it again. It always checks the pod file first. Okay, so I'm going to run it again. Now you'll notice it says the remaining 24 passwords. It's not doing 25 anymore because <coughs> it already knows it broke that one. You see, it's not going to break it again because it, it says, why break it again? I already broke it because you should know to go check that file. See how it didn't break any of that time. Okay, so so if we do a whole bunch of replacements, it won't take forever long, at least. Actually, it could. Yeah, I mean, it could take yeah. forever long, but if we do break something and we didn't, it won't break over and over. The thing that the over. Golden Dictionary does is it stores a copy of the hash and also the password that that hash hashes unhashed, I guess, technically, right. too. Yeah. So like all it does is one. looks through, oh, well, these are the things that I'm breaking. Do any of these hashes match? Oh, I already have an entry for that. Not going to do it again. And then it ixnades that one for the rest of the entire right. session. It's so it's got... Right. It's already done. It says already broken. Yes. It's... It's... It is more or less a rainbow table made explicitly for for this right. session. Because it already broke it. Why would it try to get it? What is... Uh, I wish this thing would... Hold on. Uh, most of that can be inferred from the actual context of the... Someone asked what text pad was. We're fixing to get it. I'm tired of not having it. That's fine. Um, most of that can be inferred from exactly the exact context. Are we that boring? You're leaving already? In the, in the 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 I understand. It's Arlene's class, isn't it? I'm probably the back end. Is it Arlene's? It shouldn't take very That's in the actual password file. Yes, yes, all of that. That's actually giving you indicators as to what type of what type of hash it is, what type of salt it's actually using, what type of what type of what type of what is salt? Salt. Okay. Salt. Okay. So if one password made into one hash, well, it makes it so it's it's not. It could be more. So it kind of. So you could have a hamburger, then a hamburger with salt. It's still a hamburger, but the salt makes it a different hamburger. Mm -hmm. So the salt makes it a different hash for that password. Okay. So it's making it a little bit tougher. Okay, okay that's what it's doing. All right. That's, so that's, so if you and I use the same password, it won't, my password won't work on your hash. Well, you know, you know how MD5 works, right? Yes. Okay, so MD5, message digest, everything that you feed is going to be different. So in a big corporate environment, uh, you still want you still want your I think it's actually well, the front. It adds it to the pre-hash password and then hashes that. Yes. Okay. The salt is always just a piece that's added to the hash before, or to the password before it's hashed. So when those are so three, dollar signs, whatever, dollar signs, always the same. Dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. I'm not entirely sure. It's, it's, it's killing me here. Nice that these are all configured for me. Allow multiple instances. If we were using the same salt, if we were using the same salt, then it would. If we were using the same okay. salt, then the your, if your password was the same as my this password, this freaking thing you're killing me here. <laughs> but if I was using a slightly different salt, my my hash would be completely different. Per person, but that would also show <laughs> to be a salt I mean, it's to supposed to be just a little bit, a little bit of 
Dang it, I want to do season password. All right, so next week we're going to talk about salt. Okay, so, again, our, po our pot file contains hard as nails because we already broke it, and it knows that this is the hash it went to, so it won't break it again. If I delete the file, if I delete the file, then it would have to break it again. So let's look at the next substitution rule. Okay, we did substitution. Now let's do insertion. Insert character X at position N. So, um, let's open, let's see, we got this. Okay, we need, we're, I'm going to get rid of these two, these three. I'm going to insert, uh, is it character first or number first? Into the position. Insert at position zero. And uh, let's put uh, N. Okay, so that's saying insert at position zero, the letter N. Okay, so I'm gonna run this with that, and you'll see it put an N in front of zooming. Ever see that? So, okay. so like insert at position. Position nine. zero, it always starts at zero. It's just like in programming, position right. zero is the beginning, then one to two. So this said insert at position zero, which is the very beginning, the letter N. Can we say insert position say 99? Would it come with an error if there's not a position I, in That's a good question. Say, Let's try that one. That way we could say insert position I think nine. it will work, actually. I think it will actually insert a 9 at, at the very end. If, if I remember right. Oh, uh, will it? Wrong because it no, doesn't, it can't do it. It's too much. To. Yeah. Right. Okay, so it won't allow you to mean. use two, two yes. numbers so unless you use an uh, escape character. I but think. what, so, okay. so we saw how to insert one, but you have to specify the number now. What this is good for is... Like, people will take a password put one at the end. Now, there is a way to append. append you're, you need a pen is what you want. Okay, a pen. We can do that. Answer. Okay. Yeah, you can use a pen to put something at the end. That way, whatever I was position. Just one unified right. command. Yes. Okay, so that's insert. Overstrike says overstrike at position zero. So this time, we are going to overstrike. Oh, overstrike position zero. We're going to put an end. So that should take zooming and, and make it what? Zooming. Oh, zooming. Remember, overstrike at position zero and end. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. No. Nope. No. Nooming. Should be nooming. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, 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 yes, Roy's wrong. He's quite frequently wrong. Right. Okay. So everybody see how that works. So again, by making all these rules, if you had a long enough word list, long enough password file, I mean, enough rules, you could basically mangle anything. Okay. Yes. A space is actually a space. It's actually a space. Yes, it's it is. actually a space. No. It's actually a space. Okay, so let's go with uh, rejection. Now, you can tell it to reject based on certain things. Okay, reject words if it contains character X. So we are going to... That, and let's go with, uh, we are going to do, it's a Z, isn't it, at the beginning? So now we are going to reject Z. I think that's how that one works. Let's find it. A lot of times you have to play with it. Now you notice zooming is gone. Because what it did is we rejected it because it had the letter Z in it. Okay. Reject, that, reject the letter G. <laughs> no, that get rid of a lot of words. But you can reject it based on character class. Like you can tell it to reject uppercase, reject lowercase, reject numbers, reject whatever. Now this is all things that have Z in it or all things that start with Z? Have Z in it. Z in it. Actually, that's a good question. Let's change it to G then like you wanted. This should reject everything with the letter G in it. 17 words. <laughs> so it went from a whole bunch down to 17. All right, now it's append and prefix, okay? So append, we're going to put an X at the end, okay? So now we are going to, is it dollar sign? Let's put exclamation point at the end. Is there anybody here using an exclamation point at the end of their password? They said they saw Google up there on the list. They probably did. There it is. So we appended that to the end of it. Can we append more than one? Let's find out. Let's append. Actually, let's append one, two. Is 
doesn't mean one two. Oh, that solves the password one two three. There you go. You can very easily put password one two three at the end. Okay. Does it do like mirroring or reverse order? Oh, we're getting there. Okay. okay. We could also prefix. We can put the other thing in front of it. Now we're going to put that and that. Now the question is, is it going to be 1, 2 zooming or 2, 1 zooming? It should be 1, 2. Because I think it's going to be 1, 2. Oh, no. no. It's because it, it, it follows the, the first rule. Oh, that's right. Depending on the one, then depending on the two in front of the one. Good. Oh, yeah, because yeah. It rules of Darn it, we were both wrong this time. I know. It never rules happens. But that's why we try it, to make, see what it does. Okay? See, normally when I do this demo, I don't cover this as much as in depth because you probably broke five more passwords now than the normal people by doing this. Just saying. It's a little bonus you get for coming to this. I'm just saying, everybody should also try out Hashcat. It's pretty neat. Yeah, that's what I told them at the beginning. But remember, we couldn't get some... Yeah, John the Ripper by itself will break the first 25. Then you just got to figure out the rest. Yes, it is. <laughs> you, you and me both. It's, it's okay. different, but just different enough to actually throw you off. So let's go with this. So now we are going to rotate. So what's going to happen to zooming now? Umings, I think. Oh, the other way. It went the other way. Okay. Right, you can change it, though. You can do the other one. Yeah, so if we had done... That one, we would have gotten uming, uming, yeah, that one. There it is. Yep, and you can <laughs> rotate multiple times. Okay. <coughs> Actually, there is a lot of preset rules. There's already a bunch that comes with it. I just have them all commented out. It, Each different line, uh, each different line is interpreted independently. Yeah, I could do a line for substitution, a line for insertion, a line for reject, a line for whatever. Well, then put a pound sign in front of them. Comment line. And it'll keep it there. It's like all these here. These are all commented out. The reason is John the Ripper comes with a lot of good ones already. If you just don't want to run a rule, put a pound sign in front of it. In fact, I'm okay. positive. He put a rule in, it didn't work, pound sign. So he knew. Put the next rule under it. Save, run it. If and once you got one that worked, you put a comment in there. Right. This and broke whatever. That's how it works. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Rule, that's good and then now we're going to go with the square bracket. That's going to delete. So we're up zoom in. Zoom in. We're zoom in now, not zooming. Okay. Easy enough. You see how that works. Same way with the other one. Wait, no. The other one doesn't do it. You can't do it with the left hand. You can't, you, take, you can't take the G and put it in front of the Z? No. With the opposite character? Let me show you why. The reason is, remember when I did substitute an A with an at a minute ago? Yeah. I could actually do substitute an A with an at and a four. Now it's going to do groupings. <coughs> okay. Let me show you. Oh, wait. Not A. Let's do... Oh. G, 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 G. Yes. Okay, we'll do G. <laughs> okay. See how the G changed to a four? But if I went up, oh, crap. Can't up I can't go back far enough. But the first thing it did, it replaced it with an at, and then it replaced it with a four. So it did double, it, not double substitution, but it replaced it two different times. Right. Now I could have put. I could have done this as well. Like S. Multiple brackets. Uh, I actually don't know. I mean, a bracket in a bracket? Yeah. I don't Almost think. Like nesting it. I don't think you can do. Nesting. Oh, you mean like around the G? I don't think you can do that. Well, no. What I'm saying is a bracket did, within those uh, sets of brackets. And then the, the G. Oh, like. If you did another one. Like that. And then a little. Why did you just check the left bracket? Or something in there. So. It, 
You may have to write a script to do that. I had no idea. It might explode. You have to close the brackets. Everybody duck down. This might explode. I feel like it would just check for a bracket. You deleted. There's, there's no... Uh, oh, okay, it's probably saw it as a video. Okay, whatever you just said, it didn't work, so okay. skip it. <laughs> they searched for it? I'll tell you, it might it. work. I Just try it. So cool thing about this, just play it forever. Wait, Roy, is substituted and then deleted and deleted? Yes, there is. So nice. Oh, dash zero dash nine, yes. I'm pretty sure you can, yes. yes. I know, I haven't tried all of this. Okay. Let's do plural eyes. Okay, we're gonna put a P and then an I. We're gonna do two different rules here. Okay. So what's what's P gonna be? So zooming is gonna become what? Zoomings. Okay. So then, what's an I gonna give us? Zooming. Oh, capital I. Hence the word capital I. Because it was lowercase i is an insert. Zooming in. Okay. Now, I will tell you, on the test in this class, you have to do this. You need to try it. <laughs> okay. Because whatever rule you think, try it. Because it... So every rule you're trying right now, we should try it. Well, and I tell you exactly what to do. I say, take this word and make it into this word. Oh. What can we do? Well, yeah. Now that you might have to figure out on your own. Does it matter the way we get there as long as we get there? Yeah, kind of. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll tell you one thing we did a couple semesters ago. We gave out elite passwords, which would never have been broken. Frank Woodall was here at the time. I mean, he came up with this rule that's like, no, it's not going to happen. But I told the students, if you break a rule, if you break one of the elites, you get 100 on the assignment. Okay. Well, one of my students was nice enough to go up on Craigslist and pay for the answer. Problem is, she bought it from Caleb in my office. Or was it Cameron? Was it, it was Roy. Okay. <laughs> she bought it from Roy. And it was funny because she asked, she said, uh, sorry, it was a girl, but None of the girls in here. She's like, can you, um, she goes, ooh, can you help me break these passwords? And if you can break in an elite, I'll pay you an extra 20 bucks or something. Well, we broke in an elite. She didn't ask us for the rule. She just said, you know, to break it, which we did. We broke it for her. So when she turned in her assignment, she says, wow, that's amazing. What rule did you use? She had no clue. No clue. But we even found the article. On, we found it on Craigslist before student never turn in the well, assignment. Was like, would you check the rules to see which order they were in as long as... It does matter what order they're in. Okay. Yes, it, it really matters. Like, remember when we did the the prepend? Oh, Remember yeah, the two right. and the one, the one right. and the two? Yeah, that, that really matters. So, now we've only touched on a very small percentage of the rules. There's like quite a few more you can do. Okay. They go on forever. But it's really cool to play with. Okay, there's our range. Zero, you know... Dot, dot, nine. Actually, let me make a small file here real quick. Let me take this. We're going to copy this here. I'm going to call it word small. Text bad. We are going to, we're just going to use baseball. Can make this so you can see some of the things. Okay, so we're just using baseball as our words now. So it's going to be word small. So this should give us a different output. Okay, well, it gave us nothing. Okay, so now let's go back in here to where's my other thing right here. And you want someone asked about a range, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, <coughs> substitute and a with zero dot dot nine. I think it's dot or it's a dash. Yeah, I think it's three. It may be three dots. We're going to find out in a second. It's either two or three. There we go. We got 
A, so the A in baseball got replaced with a zero, and then a dot, and then a nine. So it's only one dot then. No, it, maybe there's a hyphen. I can never remember which one it is. We're going to get it. There it is. Okay, there's a hyphen then. Okay. okay so you could do a rock 13, maybe even two classes? Well, yes. Well, see, what's this? Three Numeric dots. constants can be specified. So, oh, so it is three. Hold on. Let's go up in here and do... <laughs> so I don't normally do it this much. No, that didn't take do away the, Take away the uh, brackets. Okay, but I don't know if that's going to work. We're reading the rules. It has to work. No. Yeah, well, we're doing substitution. We need the S. We need the A. But all I know is this, the dash works. You are totally free to play with this. But you, one thing I will tell you, at least those in my class, is this one works here. Do not replace every letter in the alphabet with every letter in the alphabet. You know what I mean by that? A with A, B with B, C with C. Well, don't replace A with B, A with C, A with D, A with E. I literally had a student who says, I've been running this for two weeks and I ain't had nothing. I look, he had a substitution. So you took the letter A, replaced it with every single letter, number, special character. Oh, so then the letter B, every single letter, and it's like, it well, took forever. It took forever. He got nothing. All I did in this project was I used basic substitutions. <coughs> like, I'm not going to replace an A with a 1. That's stupid. Yes. What do you mean mix and match? I can put a substitution and a, uh, let's see, insert at position 0 and H. And then append a 1. I could do that too. Can you tell it to do like one roll, then the other roll, then both? Yeah, just don't, on one line, do one roll. On the next line, just put two rolls. Next line, put three rolls. It does one line at a time. And you are limited, it's like 127 characters per line. What, what if I didn't want to go through and make a password this and then try replacing it? What if I wanted to like, um, do all the passwords like with the air placement and that, and then all the passwords are mirrored, and then all the passwords are mirrored, and, the mirrored, and with the air placement and that? And what you would have to do is you would have to do, you know, on line one you do, so you know, sub, uh, the next line would be mirror. Then, you know, replace with an at, whatever, you know, the, whatever. I'm not writing the rules, but, you know. So I couldn't just give it, like, a range of, like, five rules and tell us to just mix and match these every possible combination? I, not that I'm aware of. No, um. You could probably write your own script to do it, tell you the truth. You, what you do is you could write a JavaScript and have it write to the file. Yeah, and, and change run it. it. And then run, r run, your, right. run your script, run it. Run your script, run it, run your script, run it. Remember when we did the, uh, we, were, we were rejecting something, we re re rejected the G? Remember that? Well, you could reject all lowercase letters, reject all uppercase letters, reject all digits, reject all <laughs> letters in general. So if I did this right here, you know, question mark D, it would skip every password with a, with a digit in it. Ever see how that works? That becomes important for this project y'all are working on. All right, uh, we can also convert to uppercase, convert to lowercase. We can do, uh, like, ours were all upper. Actually, this is baseball. Baseball is lowercase, isn't it? Isn't baseball lowercase? Yeah, so now baseball is uppercase. So you could run a rule and then convert up to case, and, you know, you can just do all kinds of stuff with it, so. Did you ever start the recording? Oh, yeah, I started it. It's going, maybe. Yep, it's going. Okay. So, yeah. So, it is a really cool tool, and you can do a lot with it. Hashcat can do a lot more. Yes. It's just that, uh, for I know what we tried in here. Wasn't there some we tried to do and we couldn't get to work with Hashcat? There was, like, one, one <coughs> that we could get to work on, John the Ripper, that I could not, for the life of me, find a way to do in Hashcat. Right. Yeah, we already had the hashes made, so we wanted these, and then we... Couldn't get Hashcat to, to do it, so. We have to have that one rule to. There's at least one rule that. So that all that means is there's one password you might have a very hard time breaking. 
The way this project works is if you just run John the Ripper out of the box, it's going to give you half of them. Okay, the way that would work is, remember when I logged in here a little bit ago, it sent my hash across to compare with the domain controller? You could use a program like Kane to capture that. Yeah, yeah you'd be able to capture the hash, and then you would run the hash here. <coughs> oh, yeah, we're using that the next week. We're using Hydra to do that. Yes, good. Yes, it will. It'll work on SAM files. It'll, yeah. You can actually go into the SAM file and copy out the hash. So, uh. okay. So, at least a general idea of how John the Ripper works now. Okay. Forensics, you will be getting a uh, extra credit for that. So, no. I mean, you're gonna have to solve it. I mean, I have it. It's just. Oh. Oh. Okay. All right. There's John the Ripper.